Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be showing you 10 legendaries that you must have at level 57. These legendaries are the start of any great build, and I'll be telling you why they're so good, as well as letting you know where you can get them. The game has changed a lot over the last month and a bit, so if you're just coming back or just getting started, you can be sure that these guns are amongst the best in the game and will serve you very well in any in-game builds. There's no DLC 2 weapons on this list, I plan to make a video separately on those as it's filled with great guns, but that also means that you can be confident you can try out 90% of these weapons as I have picked one from the first DLC. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like to help keep me motivated and keep me uploading videos. And Let's crack into it. In no particular order, the first gun you'll want to have at level 57 is the lob. If you haven't been around for a while, you may be questioning my sanity, but no, the lob is actually good now. Better than good, in fact, it's amazing. It has an increased chance to drop from Grey Ward in the Floating Tomb on Eden 6, who you'll probably be farming anyway, so that might not be a change for you. The lob can come in any element and fires three slow moving elemental orbs in a three round burst pattern. Because they move slowly you need to get close to your opponent to hit them, but when they do they deal some serious damage. Its elemental damage is also high and it's surprisingly good with ammo too. I do find though that sometimes the orbs can go straight through your target and deal no damage. This can be frustrating, especially in clutch moments. But overall the lob is a fantastic gun and there's very little weapons in the game that can even get close to it when it comes to pure damage. Another weapon you should have at level 57 is the Maggie which has an increased chance to drop from Tremendous Rex, the final boss of the Cistern of Slaughter. The Maggie is a shotgun pistol similar to the Purple Mashes but it has a considerably bigger mag size and an extra pallet. It's a shotgun pistol with the power of a shotgun and the mobility of a pistol. That's a lethal combination and the Maggie is a great gun all round. It's also manufactured by Jacobs which means a boost to its critical damage and the ricochet effect. Because of its multiple pellets it's great at proc and kill skills if you're a seeing dead zane or a bounty hunter flak and it can easily hold its own in any combat situation. The Brainstormer is another weapon that you should be on the lookout for and has an increased chance to draw from Katagawa Ball you can find here at the very end of Skywell 27. The Brainstormer is made for mobbing, it always comes electric and becomes increasingly more powerful the more enemies there are around. That's because of its unique effect which causes electric chains to sprout outwards from the enemy you're shooting. These chains will then link to any nearby enemies. The more enemies around the higher the voltage and it's the perfect weapon if you're looking to shock your enemies into extinction or if your car won't start. The Krakatoa is another gun that if you haven't been playing recently you may wonder why it's on this list. It like the lob received a huge damage buff and is quite comfortably the most deadly sniper rifle in the game which you can get from the Rampager you buy in the Forgotten Basilica. The Krakatoa only comes in fire which is always a great element and shoots at a rapid pace, although it does need to be charged before firing. Other than the phenomenal fire rate, particularly for a sniper, the Krakatoa deals the damage to go with it. It easily tears through flesh targets and their shields in a fraction of a second, and although it is ammo hungry, the damage it deals is enough to make up for that. After killing an enemy, a volcano will grow from where they fell. These volcanoes are hot to step on and also spit out flaming balls of magma which are more of a hazard than anything else. Moving on to the Hyper Focus, the first great SMG on this list, which has an increased chance to drop from any of the Go Go Power Troopers, you fight at this area of the map in Atlas HQ. I thought the Hyper Focus was terrible before when it was actually better than that, but now it's a whole nother beast. It fires projectiles in a T-shaped pattern where the initial projectile splits off into two that shoot out 90 degrees from the impact point. These extra projectiles ricochet once off a world surface and when they rebound back into your target, its damage is insane. It is easily one of the top three SMGs in the game and it absolutely blitzes here on Amara if you have a ricochet build which just sends bullets flying everywhere. 
it can come in any element which is great and I found an incendiary one to serve me best but radiation is the most adaptable element. Either way though you should just be happy to get one. The sickle is another weapon that you should be on the lookout for which can come in every element and is unique in the way it isn't a shotgun when it really should be. It has an increased chance to drop from the warden you can find hanging out right about here in the anvil. I say the sickle should be a shotgun because it looks like a shotgun and it sounds like a shotgun. Like if it looks like a duck and it sounds like a duck then it's a duck. Rather the sickle is a chicken. It's an assault rifle and takes ammo from the assault rifle ammo pool which is 8 times higher than you get for shotguns and is already a great start for it. However that's not why it's on this list. There is one sickle in particular that deals monumental damage compared to the others and that's the boom sickle which I'm yet to get at level 57. Instead of seeing a times 10 or so by the card you'll just see a massive number. That's because it fires exploding pallets that deal splash damage. A normal version of the sickle is good enough as you can see here from the gameplay with arguably the worst version. But just imagine what a boom sickle could do. The redistributor is another gun that you should get at level 57, mainly if you run as Zane although it is still good on other bolt hunters. It can come in all the elements and can only be dropped by Wotan who you fight in the Maliwan takedown. It's much better on Zane compared to the other bolt hunters because of its effect which causes the 7th bullet to be amped and all amped bullets to chain to nearby enemies. With Zane though and his barrier every bullet is amped and therefore will chain. Each chain deals the same damage as a single bullet and you can have multiple chains piercing multiple enemies. This creates a powerhouse of an SMG all Zane mains couldn't live without. Moving on to the OG of SMGs now and we have the Cutsman which is a Maliwan SMG that only comes in shock, fire and corrosive. The classic elements and for that we should respect it. It can be obtained fastest by defeating Borman Nates you can find here in the Meridian outskirts. The Cutsman is just great all round, great at mobbing, great at bossing. It fires a pair of slow moving projectiles that form a laser between them. This laser grows wider the longer it travels and will continue travelling until it hits a world surface. It's a great effect and allows each pair to slice through enemies dealing extremely high elemental damage. Its damage over time is great too and it's always a safe bet to get you out of trouble. The Iron Cannon is another great gun that you should look to get. It can come in every element and can only be obtained by defeating the Fabricator who you fight at the very end of Jack's Secret in DLC 1. The Iron Cannon is power personified. It's an extremely accurate and deadly launcher that gets more powerful the longer you hold down the trigger. You will know once you're at full power when the barrel starts to glow and consider that your green light to unleash some mayhem. It can easily defeat enemies in one shot and is adept at hitting crits too which ups its damage even further. It does consume 6 ammo per shot at the very least though so consider taking a transformer with you if you want to use it for mobbing. An annexed version is best because you only consume the one extra ammo while dealing close to double the damage. Last up we have the Hellshock, another gun that recently got buffed and has an increased chance to drop from Gigamind. You fight over in this area of the Meridian Metroplex. The Hellshock comes in fire and shock, hence its name, which is always a great combination and makes it suitable in a wide range of situations. It fires at an extremely rapid pace allowing it to tear through enemies in the blink of an eye although it does suffer some heavy recoil because of it. Its unique effect is for bullets to ricochet off surfaces in the opposite element but this doesn't really have much purpose unless you miss your target at just the right angle to hit them. Because it's a melee one gun it does need to be charged before firing but it's worth the wait when you see just how quickly it can drain health bars and it's quite comfortably one of the best pistols in the entire game. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some idea of what level 57 guns you should be hunting down first. If you did, consider dropping a like. 
for subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.